Hey guys, this is Lewis, and this is the second installment of The Diary of Lewis. I guess that's what I'm gonna call it. So I left you guys off with my birth, pretty much. And after I was born, my mom and my dad were on shaky ground somewhat. And they pretty much, my dad actually told my mom that it was probably best for her to move to New York City um, so that she can get residency. And hopefully my sister and I would move with her along, along with her. And so she did leave to the United States when I was like a couple of months old. And during that time, she had to leave us behind because we didn't have any paperwork or anything. So I ended up staying with my grandmother from my dad's side. And it was kind of, I think about it now and it's so weird and bizarre that I was actually living with her considering that he was married to his wife with four other children. So the fact that he had the audacity to actually have, a, have me live with his mother was pretty kind of awesome, I would have to say. And I actually lived with them for about three years with her, with my grandmother, and I, unfortunately, when I was four, I was asked, I was pretty much told that I needed to leave the house because his, what my dad's wife did not want me living there anymore. And with reason, I guess, it's kind of messed up on, my, on their end, but I totally get it. Um, also, the thing was that it was only me that was living with my grandmother. My sister had to actually live with my mom's best friend just because there wasn't enough room in the house and, you know, I don't know, I guess my grandmother took a liking towards me and told my dad that it, there was only room for one. So I was the chosen one to live with my grandmother and my aunt at the time, my dad's sister, and she also had two kids. It was one of the best times in my life, I would have to say, as a kid because I, my first memory really is uh, we, had, we had maids and, and I had actually a nanny and I remember he would take me in his motorcycle and I would hold on really tight to him and we'd drive down the beach and I remember seeing just the beach in the hair blowing and because I wasn't wearing a helmet, it was the Dominican Republic, there's no rules about wearing helmets which come to think about it now, it was really dangerous for a four-year-old kid to just be driving around in a, in a motorcycle. Um, but I remember that the air was blowing in my face and I remember that was a happy time for me. And then also I learned how to swim because the, the house guy used to throw me in the pool and I'd be drowning and then he would like save me every time I was about to drown. And I learned how to swim really quickly. So those are some really fond memories. But when I was four, unfortunately, my grandmother had to give me up because my dad's wife was just not having it. And we were, I was able to go live with my grandmother from my mom's side, so my mom's mom. And those were rough years for me because I had to live with my grandmother, my aunt, and my uncle. And my aunt had two children of her own and my uncle had two kids of his own. So it was a three bedroom apartment with like a lot of people living in there. And the thing was that my, one of my cousins, which is like four years older than me, he used to bully me all the time. He always used to make fun of me. And, you know, as a kid, he used to just make fun of me all the time and like give me wedgies and wet willies and Charlie horses and everything like that. And um, it was also kind of sad because my aunt and uncle would go on these trips and go to the pool and go to the movies and stuff and always leave me behind because of the fact that, you know, I wasn't one of their children. So I was, I, I got really close to my grandmother because she was the only one that really was there all the time for me. And the excuse was that, oh, you just have to take care of grandmother, that's why you can't go, you know? And I felt like this is where signs of rejection were just coming left and right at me because I hadn't really seen my mom um, at all. I didn't even know who my mom was until I was five when she first came back from the United States to visit for like a week. My sister I barely knew also because of the fact that she was living with my mom's best friend and I barely, I don't remember seeing her when I was a kid. And then I also, you know, had my father who would come visit randomly like every three or four months and it was really only to deposit money so that my grandmother would be able to take care of me. So it was just like a lot of rejection left and right if you think about it. And which kind of explains a lot of my reasons why I'm very guarded with myself which a lot of people tend to think that I'm, I'm being very bitchy or standoffish, and it's really more that I'm just trying to figure you out. I'm trying to figure you out because of the fact that I've been rejected so many times, and I have this huge fear of rejection. Even till then, it, it's, it's still, there's a lot of remnants of those experiences still in my head that I'm still trying to clear out because I know those experiences really messed with me as far as my personality, you know, because I was always a very 
I always I was a very huggy, lovey dovey kind of person. And those experiences that really pushed me to the other end, where I'm a little bit more standoffish and cold and distant. And internally, like I wanna hug somebody and I wanna kiss somebody really bad, but that experience kind of prevents me from doing that, from opening up that easily to the people that I care about, you know? Um, and I'm still like this with, ev with everybody. I'm always very guarded and um, I'm still working on it, guys. So, and I think this is one of the good steps now that I'm telling the whole world about my story. So my, um, I just had a lot of rejection and living with my aunt and with my grandmother and then my aunt and uncle with his kid, their kids, they just kind of like, it made it worse for me because I was always left behind. They would tell me, hey, listen, can you go to the bathroom to get some toilet paper? And as soon as I would come back from the bathroom or something, they would be gone. And I asked my grandmother, like, where did they go? They're like, oh, they went to go get something at the grocery store. And it was a lie. It was... They went to the beach, they went to the park, they went to go have fun. Like I would get stranded and left behind all the time. And I didn't know why, I, I was trying to figure out what I did wrong. And the reality was that those weren't my parents. So a word of advice for those people that who do have nephews and nieces or have a, a, a child that may not be theirs living with them temporarily, treat them like they're your kid. Because the thing is that those experiences really mess with people's heads. And I know that out there in the world, there's a lot of selfish people out there that only think about themselves or think about their kids and nobody else's. But don't mess with the kid. It's not the kid's fault that things happen to them. You know what I mean? Like, it's not my fault that my mom decided to have an affair. It's not my fault that my dad was unhappily married and decided to have me and my sister. You know, it's not my fault that I had to live with my aunt and uncle because my grandmother couldn't have me because my dad's wife didn't want me there. It's not my fault, you know what I mean? So why would you treat me differently and leave me stranded knowing that I'm a kid that really needed love and affection because my mom was not there and neither was my dad, you know? So if you ever run into somebody that's like that or there's a child or anybody, you know, that's being kind of like pushed aside, just remember that those people have feelings and you don't wanna reject them because at the end of the day, those are the very same people that may not be strong enough to survive that kind of treatment and commit suicide and do tons of things. Trust me, I know. I have a cousin that committed suicide and I'll tell you about that story later on in one of my diaries. Um, but yes, so that's my story for now. I, um, I, I'm gonna leave it out when I was five, pretty much living with my grandmother and being stranded left and right and pretty much my dad really being just a, uh, a deposit. He would just give me my mon money to take, so he would give my, my aunt money so that they could take care of me pretty much. And yes, so on a happy note, based on those experiences, what I ended up getting out of it was to be a strong-minded individual. Although rejection is something that I still need to overcome today, it's something that's also made me a stronger person and gave me a better sense of, of myself. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, I'm so sorry that the stories are a little somber right now. It does get better later on, uh, but it was a really rough start, but things do get better at the end and I came out to be a fine individual. I like to think myself and uh, I'll have another story for you hopefully next week. And thanks for listening, guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them below. I mean, I, um, like I said before in my last video, I, I want to get this like a, as a form of, as a form of therapy for me and as a form of therapy for those people that actually really need also some help because of the fact that families are sometimes just not being a family. So we'll be in touch till next week. Take care and have a good one. Bye.